I got that all in the wrong order? <laughs> is in the middle of a major funding crisis with its future in doubt. Steph, what is going on? Yeah, so Debenhams, obviously a big name on the high street. Yeah. Most people have probably been into a Debenhams at some point in their life. And there are a lot of them. There's 165 of them around the UK and they employ 25,000 people. And it's something we've talked about before, but there's a, it, the, the week's heating up, shall we say, because they've had big problems. So last year they announced that they would made a record loss. And then over the last few months, they've been talking about uh, the fact that they think things still aren't going very well for them. So they've been putting out profit warnings. And the problem is they're in a load of debt. So mm -hmm. they've got £560 million worth of debt, which they have to try and pay back at some point. And uh, they've been doing cutbacks. So they announced last year that they were going to close 20 stores this year uh, across the, the, their chain. And then over the next five years, they want to try and, and close another 50. This is obviously putting jobs at risk. Some 4,000 jobs are at risk because of this. Uh, but it's not solving their problems now because obviously this all takes a long time and they've got real cash flow problems. So, you know, they've got to repay these debts. So they've got debt repayments. And then on top of that, they've got a big rent bill to pay, which is due this week. So, uh, you know, all this money that they need, how are they going to pay it? Well, they've, they've come up with a solution this week of asking the lenders for more money, so taking on more debt. Um, they've asked, we think, for around £200 million just to try and buy them what the company says, a bit of security, uh, and get that cash flow going again. But this hasn't made the shareholders very happy because what this would mean is restructuring the business, restructuring the finances, which would mean the shareholders' investment wouldn't be worth as much. One of their biggest right. shareholders is a well-known face now in business. This guy, Mike Ashley, of course, owns Sports Direct. He's got a 29% stake through Sports Direct in Debenhams. And you'll remember last year he bought House of Fraser mm. as well. So he's got mm -hmm. a bit of a thing for department stores, it would seem. Uh, and so he has made a couple of offers to them now. So first of all, he said, right, Debenhams, I'll loan you some money. He's £100, £150 million. Pounds. Uh, if you make me chief executive, I'll, I'll loan you that money. Yeah. He's also said, I'll buy the Danish bit of the business um, again for 100 million. Uh, but Debenhams haven't bitten on any of this because they said it wouldn't solve the problems that they've got. And then the other night, he tried, he put in suggestions where that he was going to put in an offer to take over the whole company. So he was going to buy out Debenhams completely. Debenhams have said that they will take it, this into consideration, but it still wouldn't solve problems for them in the short term because of this cash flow issue. So the clock's ticking mm. and we should find out on Thursday whether the lenders um, are up for giving them more money. The thing is about um, all these things, you know, we talk about and big stores, you know, some of these are right at the heart yeah. of high streets, mm. aren't they? And really make a difference to to a city or town yeah. wherever they are yeah completely because it might be the only department store that some areas have and yeah. you know it's an attraction it pulls people into the town to then go to the other shops so it, it's it, obviously the staff are a concern but also communities as you mm. say it's, it's in the heart of them I used to remember those remember the tv advert for Debenhams with the guy with the really low voice singing about the blue cross sale Nope. Oh, I mean, I remember Blue the Blue Cross sale, right but I don't remember the ad. Anyway, right. Oh, thank Are you, you. going to give us a version? Uh, no, not really. Second I don't, time I, we've, I don't have we've the, only been on for 49 minutes. We've the, had two songs so far. I don't far. have the depth to get right down there. <laughs> you'll know. I'm sure you'll know. Yes, I did. So. Uh, why? What were we all visiting and why? Steph is in her virtual museum to oh, tell us while he gets his phone back. <laughs> Don't get too excited. Morning, everyone. Yeah, we've got the rankings for the top 250 visitor attractions across the UK. So things like museums, zoos, gardens, historic buildings, but not including theme parks. Now, last year, there were 139 million visits to these types of attractions. That's a rise of 8%. Taking the top spot was the Tate Modern, uh, with nearly 6 million visitors. In fact, all of the top 10 most visited attractions last year were in London. Now, outside of London, the National Museum of Scotland took 11th place with 2.2 million visits. Then 12th was Chester Zoo with 1.9 million visits. And Giant's Causeway was the most popular for Northern Ireland with 1 million visits. Now, what's interesting about this as well is museums did well from travelling exhibitions. So, I'm sure lots of you went to the Terracotta Warriors in Liverpool uh, at the World Museum there. That pushed up visitor numbers by 111%, making it the most visited museum in England outside of London. Dippy the Dinosaur also helped things as well. His visit from the National History Museum to Birmingham boosted numbers there 
at the museum too. So what is behind all of this? Well, Pippa Jacks is the editor of the Travel Trade Gazette magazine and uh, can tell us more about it. Morning to you, Pippa. Morning. It's always good to hear visitor numbers are up at places like this. What's the picture overall, would you yeah, say? Yeah, it's really exciting to hear all of those attractions had such a great year last year. And actually, in terms of tourism more widely, it wasn't a barnstorming year in 2018. So domestic tourism, that's us. Uh, UK residents going on holiday in the UK was down a little bit and also international tourism into the UK was down a little bit. Um, so I think what's probably happening here is actually UK residents reconnecting with their own local culture and art and history um, and taking more time to visit their local attractions which is fantastic. Yeah and, and that's why those travelling exhibitions obviously do well because then the people who can't get to London can then see them at their local museums. Yeah and it's all about giving people a reason to go back again so they might have been to, to the, the museums in Liverpool previously five years ago but this is a great reason to come back and see the terracotta, terracotta, terracotta warriors so know, it's, it's, it's fresh reasons to go <laughs> it's a hard one to say that isn't it i know i've been practicing this morning um, <laughs> and also what's what's always interesting is the fact that it's the top 10 of always london and is there any way of beating that? Is there any way of those places outside getting more visitors? It is really tricky and so many of those big attractions in London are free as well. So places like the Tate Modern, just amazing that you can go there for free apart from some of the special exhibitions. Um, but we have seen in the last few years uh, the government is trying to support projects outside London. There's this Discover England Fund which is about investing in coastal tourism and smaller towns and cities to try and get international arrivals uh, to, to spread out a little bit more. And what we've seen happen in Dundee for example is really, really exciting. They have the a museum now which just opened in September and then around that hotels have been opening as well and developing a whole new kind of tourist mini hub really which is really really exciting. Yeah because that's a real boost for lots of businesses isn't yeah. it when it comes to an area. Um, uh, what about internationally then because obviously we mentioned this is lots of people visiting their local centres and obviously people still going to London who live in the UK. Mm. What about people coming into the country have we still got a lot of that going on? Yeah international tourism is still huge for the UK it makes a huge con contribution to, to our economy um, and it's still going phenomenally well because of long-haul airlift being quite London centric mm -hmm. um, a lot of international arrivals do come into London so there is constant sort of uh, energy to try and get them outside of London fly into different cities instead you can now fly direct from Manchester to China for example and that's really exciting because it brings Chinese visitors into a different hub um, so there's definitely work going on there but it, it could do with being better to to spread international visitors out a bit more yeah interesting Pippa thank you very much for coming in to talk to us about it uh, that's it for me for now a very interesting interesting that question as you say I'm about 822 high street department store Debenhams is in the middle of a well Steph's here to tell us about a really huge funding crisis Steph. yes I mean we're, we know that Debenhams has mm. been having problems and of course you know it's a, a company uh, pretty much everyone will have been into a Debenhams at some point in their life uh, there's 165 of them across the UK 25,000 people employed by Debenhams but it's really been struggling so last year they had a record loss and then even this year they have put out some warnings that things still really aren't going very well for them and one of their biggest problems is they're in a lot of debt around 560 million pounds so big money we're talking about there and of course this is debt that they need to repay and, and that's part of the problem is the, the cash flow with things so you know we heard last year about uh, plans to try and make cutbacks for example there was talk of um, closing some stores uh, around 50 over the next three to five years uh, but that of course is you know still all to be decided in the meantime they've still got Got these bills and they've still got things to pay and one of those as well is the rent on these properties that they have they quite often their, their lease terms on their stores is 17 years so you imagine being committed to that with a store means that they owe big money. And this is the amount of money. How, how are they going to pay it? Yeah, well, that, that's what they're basically mm. trying to work out at the moment. So they've gone to uh, their lenders already and asked them for more money. So we, we think that's around £200 million that they've asked for. Uh, but that would then mean refinancing, restructuring the business a bit. And the investors, the shareholders, are worried that that will reduce the value of their share in the business. Uh, and interestingly, the, there's a bit of a personality involved in all of this in the form of Mike Ashley who yep. is their biggest shareholder so he has um, through Sports Direct his company of course he has a 29% stake in Debenhams and you remember of course he, he um, brought bought House of Fraser last year brought them out of administration 
So he's certainly got a thing for the high street at the moment and, and particular department stores. Um, so he has been also in the middle of all of this. And in the last hour, there's been a bit of a more movement on this because Mike Ashley on Monday uh, through Sports Direct said that they wanted to buy the whole of Debenhams. Uh, they put that offer, uh, not in a formal way yet, but there was talk that they're going to put this off to Debenhams. And there's been, uh, in the last hour, a, a statement put out saying that this, they're like, would they, would, you know, they want Debenhams to respond to them at some point today um, around this. Also, Debenhams themselves have been on the phone to me this morning, their representatives, uh, just to clarify that uh, uh, what's happening this week mm -hmm. and the fact that th there was talk of this deadline on Thursday when the lenders would have to decide whether to give them the money. And they're saying that's not quite as, as strict as you're saying. You know, it's a bit less, more of a formality. So don't worry, we're still working behind the scenes. It just shows you how much of a kind of important story it is from them at the minute, important time for them because they're just trying to work out what they're going to do but the clock is ticking with all of this sounds like something else you've been talking about this morning about like brexit yeah <laughs> the clock right, is yeah. ticking there's negotiations it, it, going exactly. on behind the scenes and who's going to do what and what's yeah. the answer going to be and hopefully you know debenhams it's such an important part of people so many high streets, high streets isn't it? and yeah. part of their community and of course the staff as well who work there you don't want to see um, them losing their we jobs say 25 thousand employees yeah which, yeah which is huge isn't it yeah it is thank you very much for that steph thank you steph and we'll see you a little bit thank you